design basically has a lot of attributes. So there's the perception that design really focuses on things like the aesthetics. And we heard this morning at Google, Larry's like, I want to change the visual design to make everything the same. So at a, at a surface level, one could assume he doesn't really get design because he's just talking about the visual treatment of something. I'm sure he gets it very deeply, however. But a lot of people actually still see design as being very much just the aesthetics of what it looks like. Added to that, you also have kind of the deliverables that design teams are often tasked with, with giving you back. So there's specifications and there's mockups and there's comps and very tangible artifacts that basically embody the aesthetics and the visual presentation. Of, they don't always have a chance to really go deeper and really talk about what's really behind that design. You also have kind of the perception of designers, <laughs> uh, squirrel being my favorite uh, kind of way of looking at it. A lot of times designers can get easily distracted because they think very holistically about a problem and they look at things from a much bigger lens than the average engineer, marketer, salesperson, support person, et cetera. And that can create the perception that we suffer massive amounts of ADD. Uh, because just like me right now, I'm completely fixated on the fact that my font is way too small for you guys to read. Um, and I'm, I'm really distracted by it. Uh, designers suffer this kind of perception. Uh, desi some designers also propagate that perception, unfortunately. Not all designers are equal in that, in that perspective. But so there's that kind of perception around what design is. And then there's the areas where design can have impact. And this is where it gets a little more interesting. As we were just hearing from Todd, both the what and the how are on the table these days in terms of what design really can do. The process behind design, the thinking of design, can really have a big impact there. Also on the organization, design as a whole, as a culture, as a uh, philosophy, if you will, can have a really big impact. The thing that's interesting is that you know different parts of design in terms of brand or product or service or customer support, all of those things can actually be part of the design deliverable. It's a question of who's going to do that design work in that organization. But the other big piece is the measurements. So when you're actually designing something, you have to think about the success metrics. Now, oftentimes, um, you know, friends of mine who work at other companies in the Valley, one of them just sent out uh, an update a couple weeks ago. They won some big design award the, from the AIGA about something that they'd done on their website. My reaction was like, who cares? No offense to the AIGA, but it's really not that important to me that that award was won by that team. That's not a, to me, that's not a core metric of the success of how well the service was designed aligning the metrics around the rest of the company becomes much more interesting to me, where you really want to have upfront alignment. So this morning, some of the folks were talking about, you know, how do you build consensus? How do you basically get alignment? And one of the big things is upfront saying, what is success going to look like for this thing that I'm designing? And really being able to also tie back the impact to the bottom line. I had an interesting conversation last night, I'm not sure where he is, about customers versus uh, money, but uh, you want to have an impact on the, the key metrics that your CEO, the board of directors, your investors, the things that they really look for in terms of whether the company is doing well or not. You want to be able to tie back to those attributes when you come up with these metrics. The other thing is around the potential that design has. This is the tricky part because there's kind of the big D and the little D and there's the momentum and the desire and the interest that people have. Uh, your CEO, uh, not to name names, you may have a CEO who went to New York, had a conversation with Walt Mossberg, and Walt basically beat him up because he didn't feel that the design was evolving fast enough on your products. Returning home, <laughs> you have a conversation with your vice president to say, why aren't my products evolving fast enough? And then you can basically say, you haven't given me resources, allocations, roadmap, etc." But you have to be able to kind of have that conversation and not run screaming from the room, no matter how much you may want to run screaming from the room. Um, the other big thing is, if you look at design from these types of attributes, they're not really equal like to strategy, right? So design and strategy aren't really parallel if you kind of define design more traditionally from this point of view. At the same time, what's strategy? 
So just taking a step back and looking at it more from a Harvard MBA, uh, Wharton Business School kind of classic corporate strategy level, what is strategy? And strategy is basically the definition of the vehicle, which is how you're going to get there, the arena, where you're going to play, the resources, how much money you're going to invest. It's very logical, very objective, and it looks across everything in an organization. Design is one of those things. User experience is one of those things. Everything in the company is up for grabs at that point in terms of the strategy, in terms of which lever gets moved forward, which one gets pulled back, which one gets more investment, which one gets less investment. And the horizon line for these strategies varies. So having done consumer work and enterprise work, the horizons for the strategies are very different. Being able to accommodate those strategies becomes really critical. Um, at the same time, um, the definition of the strategy. So we've heard a lot about user experience strategy, design strategies, other strategies. At a high level, the expectation that most of the executives have in the organization is strategies are going to be defined very top down. It's the job of the CEO to define the strategy. That strategy can cascade down, it can be split apart and come into chunks. User experience can be one of those chunks. If you try to design your user experience strategy from the bottom up and it doesn't align with what the CEO is cascading down, there might be some disappointment. I'm just saying, <laughs> you, you may be a little sad. Um, the other thing is that the C-level, the cross-functional piece, all of those types of things, the process for the strategy piece is very lar large and arduous in terms of the conversation. Uh, there's a term that I picked up at SAP called syndication, where you basically syndicate these ideas through the organization. I'll get into that later. But a lot of the focus and the stakeholders around the strategy, basically it's all around the alignment. And one, one conversation I had with a guy... Uh, about strategy, he said, it's the closest thing to a religion that a business has. It's totally faith-based. You have no idea if it's really gonna work until it's over, um, and it's never really over. <laughs> uh, hopefully it's not over too soon, in a bad way. Um, but it really has to take into account a whole bunch of, like the whole universe of that company. So that's why it's like, it's not just the, the e-staff and the shareholders, but it's also the partners and the distributors the customers as well. It's a whole comprehensive view of the organization. And as much as it, it, it's as easy as it, I should say, for designers to kind of look at that holistically, there's still a question of credibility and whether or not you have the credibility to participate in that religious discussion around the strategies. Um, then there's the execution of the strategy. And this is where it gets, where the rubber kind of hits the road. Um, one of the big things around the strategy is transparency and honesty and feedback, uh, being able to really know that um, when that strategy is rolled out, even if the individual thinks it's the dumbest thing they've ever heard, they're still going to do it, and they're going to give it their best. And this is where one of the little points of conflict can come up with the UX strategy is that the designer may not have participated in the definition of the strategy. They may think it's really stupid. Um, designers have a tendency to express themselves very uh, easily, <laughs> uh, both visually, verbally, non-verbally. Uh, uh, a colleague of mine who's gone on to do great things, uh, actually at one point at Apple, uh, was so disappointed in the strategy that rolled out, he sent out an email to everyone <laughs> at Apple. It was about a three-page email. He articulated why he thought the strategy was flawed and uh, everything that was wrong with it. Uh, uh, and uh, surprisingly, he kept his job. <laughs> uh, but uh, he did have to change companies soon after that. They didn't fire him on the spot. But basically, no one wanted to work with him because they didn't believe he didn't, they didn't believe he believed that what he was doing made sense. And so basically, he, uh, somebody equated it to Martin Luther nailing the thing to the door. <laughs> uh, it's kind of over at that point. Um, then there's the challenges for being able to deal with strategy. There are always challenges for being able to kind of uh, approach and roll out strategies as well. Um, one of the things with the design piece around strategies is that sometimes it comes very late, just naturally, organically, it comes very late in the process. Uh, design can come at the beginning of the kickoff of a project, but it's still going to be late in terms of the overarching strategic definition. The trick is that 
you have to build up the credibility to get involved early on. Um, so here, for this view, like in the previous view, like definitely not equal, but here strategy is much bigger than design in terms of the function of design. This is the point of view that most corporations have around design. Designers are able now to kind of change this perception, both because of the external forces coming from media, the business press, et cetera, around why design is so critical and why it's such a key differentiation. The trick is whether or not the designers are up to the tasks to work with their executives, their CEO, to kind of actually sit at this table. So the table, I, I love the table metaphor because it's just, um, you can bring your own chair to the table. You could kick in the door. You could dance on the table. <laughs> uh, but there's still a bouncer in that room who's either going to take you and your chair and drag them away. <laughs> uh, there, there's somebody, like, at the very least, there's going to be the little kid's table at the far end. <laughs> and you can sit down there. Uh, and, uh, it's, the, the table is this great metaphor. Um, especially because the, the table at the SAP uh, headquarters in Germany actually looks like it came from the set of a James Bond villain. Um, it's <laughs> the, the table itself could keep you from sitting at the table. Yeah. <laughs> the, the chairs would retract and turn into like a little thing. Um, 